Hey guys, I'm Akshansh, uh, an MFA Design and Technology graduate at Parshan School of Design. And this is the making of Signature, my thesis project. So today I will talk about behind the scenes of and the process that went behind creating this project. First of all, what is Signature? Signature is an immersive virtual reality experience that raises awareness on the impact of sharing personal data. So it is about privacy. It is about be, being more conscious towards your personal information. So today I will briefly talk about or briefly share the virtual reality experience, but you can watch the entire experience on my website. I can share, I'll share more details and the links to that later in the presentation. So I'll talk through this. As you uh, go inside the VR experience, you realize that this is a gallery of different technology companies. And as you go close to them, you are greeted with a prompt asking you to take a decision. Based on the decision you take, in this case, logging in with Facebook or logging, uh, you share more information or you share less information. So the environment augments itself or changes itself based on the option the user selects. If you go towards the other option, let's say Google, then you are greeted with another different prompt, which is on ad personalization in this case. Similar to that, if you choose an option based on sharing more data or sharing less data, then the environment reduces the data level or increases the data level. Similar to that, I've created prompts for Apple, for Instagram, Twitter, Amazon, so on and so forth, based on web history, passwords, sharing location, photos, so on and so forth. So the idea is that based on the choices that the users are making in this decision, in this uh, environment, they realize that they are sharing more data or sharing less data in the experience. Let's uh, go over the process. So. The process behind this was me trying to understand the importance of privacy first and then trying to see what is possible in terms of creating it. Early on in my research, I went into this AR or AR VR exhibit called Arcadia Earth in Midtown Manhattan. When I was inside it, I realized that this experience was primarily about people on their phones or devices uh, uh, experiencing AR. And that was correlated for me at least in terms of recording uh, the environment. So instead of experiencing the exhibit, I took out my phone and I started recording everything. I started recording what children were doing, how parents were interacting and so on and so forth. I blurred out the video for privacy concerns, but the idea of this being so open-ended and this being so possible made me realize the vulnerability that's associated with these technologies. And that's the reason why I wanted to, uh, I thought about doing something uh, with regards to this technology. A similar experiment that I did was with regards to a YouTuber called Hannah Elise. And what I did was I took one of her videos from YouTube, one of her vlogs, and I sampled out the different data points, the data inputs that she is giving away for free for generally for anyone to take out. And that is again, one more source of vulnerability. The reason uh, like sources like these made me realize the potential of uh, spreading awareness to the younger generation with regards to uh, the importance of personal data and how much thoughtful they should be about it. So in terms of the format, I thought about creating a virtual reality experience split in three parts. The first part being about uh, showing the sources of data collection. The second uh, showing that data collection happening in real time. And the third being about the ways in which they can prevent that data collection. So the experience looks similar to this in which someone is in a VR environment and when they go close to any of these bodies, then they are looking at the different sources of data that is being collected from that person. Similar to that, on the other side, when they are uh, when they go close to the other person, then they see the different ways in which they can prevent that data from being saved. So this was a very one-to-one -one correlation in terms of getting uh, collecting data and then preventing data from being collected. So securing your password, adding a VPN, and um, installing Mozilla Firefox in comparison to Google Chrome, so on and so forth. So taking all these steps. Now, 
I wanted to digitize that and create a version of it that was more implementable. So I went around and created a motion capture recording of, uh, as you can see on your left, this is a person basically, um, it was recorded motion captured. And then I created a 3D model of that person and implemented that in Unity to create a more realistic interaction of data falling and then water level essentially rising, making you feel like you are drowning in sharing a lot of data and that correspondence that metaphor essentially clicked and i went around went ahead with creating a, a little non-realistic and more artistic version of it so that people establish that correspondence and understand the uh, sharing of personal data so i uh, tilt brush became my ally and i created the entire experience in tilt brush this this is essentially me brainstorming about um, on uh, different ways in which my experience would be split different company logos would be there and people can go to those spots and then interact with them so this is how i was thinking about it now let's walk through the workflow that i had my workflow involved four main basic applications, Google Tilt Brush, Google Poly, Unity, and uh, in my case, uh, any VR headset, but in my case, Oculus Quest. So uh, I uh, step by step, first of all, in my, uh, for Google uh, Tilt Brush, I created all these assets. I designed them inside Tilt Brush for all the company logos, Facebook, Amazon, Instagram, Apple, Twitter, Google, all of these were created in Tilt Brush. And not just these uh, these logos, I even designed the environment. So uh, I designed the prompts, I designed the floor. So it's not visible in the experience as such, but I added my personality to the piece by giving my personal details. So I, like you can probably see New York, Dubai, India, Britain there, uh, like my Parsons, Bitch Pilani, places I've been to, places I've worked with, names of my friends, my phone number, my bank details, so on and so forth. So I added these things to give an indication of, of personality that is there or how, how personal privacy is to me. So I've added these in the experience as well. In addition, I also designed the entire environment. So the background environment also has this uh, archaic uh, uh, industry kind of look of uh, junk junkyard of different tech companies and different tech products spread around. So once I had the entire environment sketched in Tailbrush, then I exported that in Google Poly and I essentially created a gallery of all the particles, the prompts, the objects and everything. Once I had that, then I used, uh, imported everything in Unity using the Google Poly assets uh, from the asset store. So I imported all of these assets, I assembled my environment and then I created the interaction using uh, Playmaker. So that is what led to creation of this. And finally, once I had the environment, then I created this experience uh, in or exported this for Oculus Quest. So you've already seen this experience from the other video, but you can watch the entire experience on my website. The next bit was about creating audio for this experience. So as you can see, there was this audio associated with this experience. I wanted to uh, create my own music to visualize how sound sounds like, how data sounds like, how falling data, how rising data level sounds like. So I created my own music of falling data particles, so on and so forth. So the entire idea was to make it much more realistic, much more personalized. Finally, let's go into the setting. Initially, I had thought of creating a walkthrough of a physical virtual reality installation where someone goes to the piece, uh, sits on inside VR, and then where, uh, puts on the VR headset and then starts the experience. And I also thought about having a similar correlation of a, a projection mapped experience of if someone wears the headset, then others watching the experience can see what the other person is doing. So I had created this virtual um, uh, using Mad Mapper and other projection mapping setup. But because of COVID, I was not able to create that physically. So I had to recreate the similar setup uh, digitally. So for, to do that, I um, again resorted to uh, brainstorming and tail brush in terms of creating a 
how can I essentially convert my apartment into a live streaming setup uh, using cameras, lights, um, using different uh, setup from my environment and so on and so forth just to uh, recreate a similar experience in digitally. I also tested similar setup and uh, what I did was I essentially created these setups in my uh, using XSplit and other broadcasting software so that if I am experiencing VR inside my apartment, others can walk through with me and experience it. I also tested the lighting conditions. So I didn't have proper lighting in my apartment. So I created my own filters and uh, adjusted the lighting and removed the background and also put myself inside VR so that it looks more like I'm inside it. I'm uh, I'm living in it basically. So it, it feels more realistic. So the idea is that just by the nature of adding these personal details to the experience and then tweaking it, I was able to create an experience that looks and feels like it is personal to me and at the same time it is about privacy. So yeah, this is essentially it. This was my thought or my behind the scenes into Signature. And uh, I this project would not have been possible without uh, a lot of people, primarily Kyle, Maury, David, Catherine, Yashwant, and a lot of my other friends, faculty, and family. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, essentially listening to me, following through this project. And uh, yeah, thank you for everything. You can watch my entire project and details about it on my website. I will soon be uploading uh, the Quest or the APK for anyone who wants to experience it on SideQuest or Oculus Quest. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a lot.